Welcome to Unity with Pam, with your host, Pam Willis Hovey. Hello, I am Vincent Jones, and I, I am interviewing Dr. Lewis. How are you today, sir? I'm very well, VJ. Nice to see you, and nice to be here. Is it okay if I ask you a few questions? Certainly, please do. Question number one. Starting out as a band director and having over 30 years of experience in Polk County, why Muskogee County? Well, uh, when I was first uh, considering changing positions, um, I had several opportunities to look around different places, and uh, someone had suggested Muskogee County to me, and so my wife and I drove up here and looked around the community and loved what we saw. So when we came here and talked with some of the students and some of the people in the community, we decided this was a place we wanted to, uh, to try and get a job and relocate. Question number two. After an in-depth assessment of our school district, what is your number one recommendation for preparing our students for tomorrow's opportunities? Well, it all goes back to ensuring that we have high expectations for our students. We know that the standards and the expectations are going up all across the country as they should in order for us to be competitive with other students around the world. So in order for us to be competitive with those students, we need to raise our expectations to match those. Question number three. What is new for Muskogee County School District? Well, at the elementary level, we just purchased a brand new reading and math uh, series. The reading series is known as Reading Wonders, and the Envision Math is uh, something we're very proud of. Both of those series have just been listed by the Department of Education as uh, on their clearinghouse of what works uh, uh, throughout the schools in, in America. So we are really encouraged by that, and there are some of the few series that are listed at that high level of, of um, rigor that we expect for our students to meet those standards I was mentioning earlier. Question number four. Where did you attend elementary school and what was your fondest me memory about elementary school? Well, I attended Bel Air Elementary School in Clearwater, Florida. And probably my most fond memory was my principal at the time. If we did really well during the week in school and behaved ourselves and did everything we were supposed to, our principal personally went to the cafeteria and made cinnamon rolls every Friday. So we all worked really hard to get those cinnamon rolls. Thank you. It has been a pleasure. VJ, pleasure's all mine. Thank you. After this, we will have another scholar. Unity with Pam is being brought to you by these great sponsors. Hello, this is Pastor Willis of the Move of God Ministry. We come to welcome you to be a part of our ministry. This is not a put on, but this is a come on. And we come to share in our different ministries with our dance team, with our choir, and our TV ministry. And we're looking for great things to happen, great miracles to happen within this place. Come and be a part of the blessing plan. Come into Chester's Barbecue for our world-famous mouth-watering ribs, smoked fresh on our grill daily. Or try one of our barbecue pork plates with fresh sides. Chester's has delicious sandwich combos to choose from that are sure to please. We also serve tempting home-cooked favorites. And don't forget to take home your own bottle of great sauce. Chester's Barbecue, serving the best food at the best price. With three locations to serve you. Hello, my name is Jasmine Pomixai. I am interviewing Pastor Rod Green. How are you doing today, sir? I'm great, Jasmine. How are you? Good. What do you do as a pastor? As a pastor, I am responsible for taking care of the needs of the congregation, visiting the sick and shut-in, and uh, preaching sermons and Bible study, and also doing training sessions for the different people in the community. What church do you go to? I pastor the First African Baptist Church, which is the oldest African American congregation in Columbus, Georgia. When you were a kid, did you like going to church? As a child, I loved church. And I guess now that's why I'm a pastor now. What inspired you to become a pastor? Um, my desire to meet the needs of um, a congregation and to um, be mindful that people need to be taken care of. How many times a day do you go to church? Well, actually, I go to the church every day. But for worship, 
We have uh, worship experiences on Wednesday and Sunday, in the morning, in the afternoon, and then in the evening. What are some rules that people would like to know about becoming a pastor? Some of the rules uh, someone may consider would be to make sure that it's in your heart, that you have a desire to really help people, and that you love God. What is the best thing about your job? The best thing about my job is being closer to God and being closer to the people that worship God. My last question is, what kind of advice would you give to people who want to become a pastor? To make sure that it is their calling, to make sure that they genuinely love people, and to always be compassionate. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much, Jasmine. Now we'll be back with another scholar. Come on in to Sugars for a sweet taste of Southern cooking. You will be taken back to Sunday dinner at Grandma's house with everybody. Daily special serving fried chicken, collards, black eyed peas, also melt in your mouth cornbread. You will want to ask for seconds. Also try one of our homemade desserts. You will be in sweet, sweet heaven. Sugars offers catering for all your corporate church and family gatherings. They would do all the work and save you all the trouble. Sugars, a taste of Southern cooking. Hi, my name is Kynes, and today we have Alex from WTVM. Hi. Hi. How are you today, Alex? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Good. Hmm. Okay. We're going to start with our first question. Are you from Columbus? Yes, I'm from Harris County. Oh. Okay. What high school do you go to? Harris County High School. I'm a senior this year. Oh, that's very good. Yes. What made you want to join w WTVM? I've always loved being in front of the camera, and I've always loved Ellen DeGeneres and Aaron Andrews, and I've always wanted to step in their shoes and do what they do every day. This looks mm -hmm. like a really fun job, and I think I would enjoy it. That's why I wanted mm -hmm. to kind of see what it would be like interning. Especially Ellen. I Sp love her TV show. Yes, me it's too. very amazing. Yes. Yes. Um... What are the things that you do while you're behind the scenes of WTVM? I shadow all areas of WTVM. So I shadow with the producers, the managers, the anchors, the reporters, and I kind of see what they do every day. And I step in their shoes and pretty much do the same thing they do daily. Mm. What are you going to major in when you go to college? I'm going to the University of Alabama, and I'm going to study with communications. Mm. So, when you like study with communications, are you like going to be on TV too? I might be able. They might give me the opportunity to be in front of the camera as well, but I'll probably be doing the same thing I kind of am doing now and learning the ropes and, you know, kind of learning what, what goes into it and what I'm going to have to do when I become one. Mm. Your job sounds very interesting. It is. Mm. Okay. We'll be back with another scholar. Is your weight preventing you from leading a happy, healthy life? West Georgia Health in LaGrange is the only accredited center for weight loss surgery in the region to offer all three surgical options, and your procedure may be covered by insurance. To learn more about your weight loss surgery options, visit WGHealth.org. So West Georgia Health, so healthy together. Welcome back to Union of Pam. My name is Damian Cobb, and I'm here with Mr. Todd Stanfill, Athletic Director. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Well, we're going to give you a series of questions. Okay. The first one I like to ask is, what is your job? Well, currently I'm the District Athletic Director for Muskogee County. I oversee all of the athletic programs at our eight high schools and 12 middle schools. What type of sports do you supervise in those middle schools and high schools? I supervise all the sports we have in our district. For example, in the fall we have football, cross country, volleyball, cheerleading. In the wintertime we have basketball and wrestling and swimming. And then in the spring we have soccer, baseball, golf, tennis, and track. And I hope I didn't leave anything out. When did you start this career? Uh, 22 years ago. Uh, I started off as a, as a teacher and coach, and, uh, and then I've just kind of progressed from there. 
What made you choose, choose this job as a career? Well, my entire life I, I've been involved with sports, played sports in high school and college. And um, when I got into education, I had an opportunity to be an athletic director and it just seemed like a natural fit. Uh, over the course of my career, I've kind of tried to get out of athletics a few times, but it just never seems to work. I just always come back to it. So it just uh, seems to be a calling for me. How long have you been in the spot you are, the athletic director? Uh, just started my second year in Muskogee County. What advice would you have to people who want this job? Well, I'd hope they'd wait till I got finished with it to start with. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, basically, uh, you know, you, you would need to have some sort of sports background. Uh, obviously a college education and I would my advice to them would be while you're in college try to be involved with the athletic program in some form or fashion at your college and, and you know as a volunteer or something to give you some some experience in that area and then just everything you know anything you can at the high school or middle school level if, if you're teaching or coaching at that area. What did you do to get in the spot you are in? Well, I think uh, just put in a lot of time. Uh, I, this is my 16th year as an athletic director, and I've been an athletic director at, you know, at two or three different schools in my in my career, all building up to the to where I could be in this position. Well, that's all the time we have for you, and it Pam. Thank you. Thanks for having we'll, me. We'll come back with some more. Come into Chester's Barbecue for our world famous mouth watering ribs smoked fresh on our grill daily, or try one of our barbecue pork plates with fresh sides. Chester's has delicious sandwich combos to choose from that are sure to please. We also serve tempting home-cooked favorites, and don't forget to take home your own bottle of great sauce. Chester's Barbecue, serving the best food at the best price, with three locations to serve you. Welcome back with UNT with Pam. I'm here with Mr. Brown, is it? Yes. Welcome. Nice to have you. Yeah, thank you. Well, what? I mean, what school do you go to? You know. Uh, I go to George Washington Carver High School. Yes, sir. Do you? Do you? What do you do? Uh, I play football and I take AP classes at George Washington Carver. Okay, so you're trying to be like a doctor. Um. Yes, yeah, physical therapist. Okay. What challenges did you have? challenges did you have to go overcome? Oh, I actually had a couple. Uh, in elementary school, I was autistic. I had a learning disorder. And my freshman year, I had a uh, knee surgery. Did you say you did football? Yes. Do you like football in school? Uh, I love school and football. Uh, the two work hand in hand. <laughs> I know. What are you going to do when you're older, like as in job-wise? Uh, my plan is to hopefully play in the NFL, but if that doesn't work out, I want to be a physical therapist for a professional team or just have my own firm. Which, what college are you going, going to go to? Uh, I'm going to the University of Alabama in Roll Tide. <laughs> uh, I'm an <laughs> Auburn fan, so that's kind of offensive to me. <laughs> What degree are you trying to pursue? Um, I want to have a, a degree in kinesiology, physical therapy. Did you get a scholarship? Uh, yes, I had over 30 scholarship off offers from schools like USC, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Georgia, a lot of schools. Wow, that's a lot of yeah. scholarships. <laughs> well, that's all we have time for. And we'll be back with another scholar and another person. Come on in to Sugars for a sweet taste of Southern cooking. You will be taken back to Sunday dinner at Grandma's house with everybody. Daily special serving fried chicken, collards, black-eyed peas, also melt-in-your-mouth cornbread. You will want to ask for seconds. Also try one of our homemade desserts. You will be in sweet, sweet heaven. Sugars offers catering for all your corporate, church, and family gatherings. They would do all the work and save you all the trouble. Sugar's a taste of Southern cooking. Welcome to Unity with Pam, and today I'm interviewing Mr. Robert Jernigan. Jernigan, right? Yeah, Jernigan. Jernigan. And from Carver High School, and I have a few questions for you today. All right. 
Question one. What elementary school did you go to? Um, I went to River Road. I'm on elementary school on the north side of Columbus. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> what college are you going to? Uh, I'll be attending Delaware State University in Dover, Delaware. Question three. What sports do you play? Um, I play football. In my freshman year, I played basketball. In sophomore and junior year, I did wrestling. Wrestling, dangerous sport. <laughs> Question five, what is your goal in life? Um, my goal in life is to be successful, and then as I become successful, I want to help other people and help them strive to become successful as well. That's great. <laughs> what challenges have came in your life? Uh, challenges. One challenge I had was the end of my junior year, I got hurt in football practice. And what happened was my back, I had a L4 or L5. And so like in the middle of the summer, I had to get surgery on my back and I was gonna be out for the season for about at least half of it. And I had to come back stronger and better. Okay, I have one question. What's what is an L4 and L5? It's like a disc in your, like your, on your spine, like near the bottom of it. To keep you standing up straight huh? or Yeah, yeah, it's a disc. Oh. So basically like a disc where your spine at. Oh. <laughs> well, that's all I have. Question. Well, nice meeting you, Mr. Nice Rogers. meeting you too, Ryan. And we'll be back with the next scholar with Unity with Pain. Hello, I'm Carla Etheridge from uh, Uganda, a missionary there. I'm just asking today if you could please help us. We need to feed hungry children and we need to send them to school. We would appreciate your help so much because God cares for widows and orphans. If you would just send it uh, financial support, it would really be helpful to us. We will be praying for you, and I hope you will be praying for me. We thank you very much. God bless you all. Hello, and welcome back to Unity with Pam. I am here interviewing Mr. Tinker. Alrighty. Mr. Tinker, what inspired you to be an exterminator? An opportunity simply came along a friend of mine had needed a partner, and it sounded interesting, so we formed a partnership. Okay. Question two. When did you start? 1979. Okay. Question three. Did you ever switch technology? Um, we went to using a computer to uh, keep our books, and do our route work in 1991. Okay. Question four. What was your main problem or your main bug? I would have to say that for a long time the German roach uh, was the biggest challenge and in the last several years uh, ants have become an increasing challenge. So I'd have to say that uh, ants have taken over what uh, we have to deal with the most. Okay. Question five. How did you hire people? How did you get people to work? Um, not having any training in it. Put a sign out in front of the office, fill out application, interview uh, pr pr prospective employees, and try to hire the right one. Okay. Question number six, and the last question. How long do you plan to keep this career going? Um, I do not want to retire. I'm 60, soon be 64, and uh, I will continue on to it's time for the good Lord to take me home. Okay. After, the, after these commercials, we'll have another scholar on Unity with Pam interviewing. Is your weight preventing you from leading a happy, healthy life? West Georgia Health in LaGrange is the only accredited center for weight loss surgery in the region to offer all three surgical options, and your procedure may be covered by insurance. To learn more about your weight loss surgery options, visit WGHealth.org. West Georgia Health, so healthy together. Hello, I'm here, I'm Or Wallace here on Unity with Pam, interviewing Ms. Zelda Terry, a motivational speaker, here with us on Unity with Pam. 
Good afternoon. Hello. And how are you? I'm doing fine. Good. Is it okay if I ask you some questions? Yes, it is. Good. Number one, what is a motivational speaker? Well, a motivational speaker is a, is, it's a person that encourages people and let them know that you can make it no matter what happens to you in life. That sounds nice. Number two, how does motivation help someone? Well, the way motivation helps a person is that it, it encourages them. That no matter what, they, what happens to them, for example, if they suffer loss, pain, death, uh, for example, if you don't pass a test, then I can encourage you in saying that you can, make, you can pass the next test if you just study a little harder. Question number three. What motivated you to be a motivational speaker? Well, what, made, what motivated me to do this is that I've gone through a whole lot in my life, from my childhood until my adult age. I've had a lot of pain and disappointments, a lot of things that happened, and I wanted people to know that they can make it no matter what. You can if you just set your mind to it. You'll be able to make it with God's help. And number four, <laughs> what are the requirements to be a motivational speaker? To me, the, mot the uh, requirements are if you have love and sympathy for someone. You know what sympathy means? Sympathy simply means you can enter into another person's thoughts and feelings. You can feel what they feel. And if you have love, then you can help them. In conclusion number five, what exact, how exactly do you encourage somebody? Well, the way I encourage a person is through, uh, this is a big word for you, precept. That's, that's biblically speaking. An example, especially to the ones who have known me throughout my life. If I've changed and they knew what I've gone through, then they'll say, well, she can help me. For example, like you. I was in the fifth grade one time myself. And I know that if you're in the fifth grade, then you will be able to graduate if you just keep studying hard. You'll make it. And listen to your teachers, listen to your parents, you'll be able to make it. Well, that's all the time we have. Thank you, Miss Terry, for joining me today. Thank you. And now we'll be back with another scholar with someone else to interview. When your child is sick, you take them to the doctor, right? Well, at Zoe Pediatrics, we don't just take care of sick kids. We want to keep the healthy ones healthy. At Zoe Pediatrics, we're in the business of prevention. We would love if when our children are 100 years old, they could say they were never sick a day in their life because of what they learned at Zoe Pediatrics. Don't wait for sickness. Children don't have to be sick to get better. Good doctors treat illness. Really great doctors prevent disease. Zoe Pediatrics, 10th Avenue at 17th Street. Looking for a different kind of church service? Instead of your Sunday suit in a row of pews, Midtown Connection offers a cup of coffee and some real conversation about who Christ is and what being a Christ follower means. Midtown Connection is located inside Waldrop Memorial Baptist Church on Hilton Avenue, right in the heart of Midtown Columbus. Join friends over a cup of coffee this Sunday and enjoy uplifting music and a positive Christ-centered message. Midtown Connection at Waldrop Memorial Baptist Church. The way worship should be. Welcome back to Unity with Pam. My name is Brooklyn Jones. Today I am interviewing the prodigy that can play the piano backwards, Caitlin Hill. How are you doing today, Caitlin? I'm well. How are you, Brooklyn? Good. So, question number one. How old were you when you, when you started playing the keyboard? Well, I think that was about when I was maybe seven or eight years old. Can you read music? No, not anymore. I used to be able to. What is your favorite type of music to play? Definitely gospel. 
Do you play any other instruments? Yes, I play drums, I'm learning guitar, and then piano. Have you ever thought about teaching lessons to other people? I actually do. I provide lessons to other people on piano. What advice would you give to kids that kids wanting to learn to play an instrument? Well, if they really want to do it and they're serious about it and it's just not one crazy idea and you don't want to do it anymore, then I say if you truly, truly feel like you want to do it, then go for it. Things can happen. Now, can we hear you play the piano? Sure. Thank you for watching Unity with Pam. If you would like to be a sponsor, please contact us or visit unitywithpam.org.